As a kid, I lived in a super cramped up apartment. My idea of going outdoors was to just be close to nature, hang around trees, dig my fingers in mud. I loved the fabric of nature. I used to pick up pebbles, barks of trees, also pressed flowers. When I looked at them in my palms, I felt that they were little treasures. So I brought them back home and I collected them in a box. I call that box my box of curiosities. Rather, it was an old shoe box with strange broken things. But those broken things made me really happy. I started exploring different kinds of materials from the outdoors. But inside of my house as well, there was an interesting thing going on. My mother worked in an art material company and there was no dearth of colour in my life. I was immersed in colour. I used to paint. I used to pick up different pigments and it was amazing. And I thought, why not be an artist? I wanted to make art my life. So I decided to go to art college. The years in art college were very interesting, very exciting. There were new thoughts, new sets of beliefs, very big influences in my life. I started to engage myself with different kinds of methods and techniques, the very conventional ones that are taught in art college. That helped me approach my art making practice. But somewhere along the line, I felt that that fabric of nature, that tactility, that touch, that need to bring the organic back into my art was blurred and lost somewhere along the way. I continued painting for about 10 years professionally. I, I loved it at that point of time, but one fine day I hit monotony. I felt that here are some store-bought materials that I'm working with. They have a sense of surety. There is no sense of change or evolution in it. And that's when I decided that I need to step out of my studio comfort space and just move outdoors. And the next thing you know, I was out again. I had heard about this local pottery studio in a basti in Mumbai. And there was a tuck. When I visited that basti, I saw potters throwing beautiful pots. Students who were making these large scale furnaces with fire bricks. Hobbyists came and they learned about glazing techniques. Uh, artists came and made murals. I still remember that dusty, messy, mesmerizing environment. The dust, the, the moistness in the air, the buzzing of the wheel and people immersing their hands in raw clay and working with their bare hands. I felt like soft nature was back in my hands. And then it was no looking back and nothing could stop me. Because I was this aimless child moving around the studio, trying to mix up different materials with clay, trying to see what can work out, what can explode. I didn't bother about any uh, criticism or scoffs that came towards me because that was true. I was really an aimless child trying to have fun and play and why not? And because of that, a old habit, I would rather put it as a good habit returned back to me. In my studio, I started bringing back different samples, interesting materials that I would find when I would travel, when I would get out. They found their way into my studio space. I started to test them, dissect them, see what happens with it. I used to live with it and daydream and muse with those materials. And as I kept engaging myself with this, 
I felt that I had built these really thick and large walls around a soloist practice of me, my canvas, the flatness, the store-bought material. But there was something very pale and unexciting about it. Uh, for me, I had this realization. I felt that, hey, interesting materials are actually everywhere. In forests, in landscapes, in cities, in bazaars, in markets. You just have to stop. You have to train your senses to probably want to look deeper, understand it better, not be afraid, probably be fearless to just touch and feel things. And this is how I just started to collect. So, uh, a funny thing, a lot of my friends who travel with me just till date bear the terrible brunt of their baggages being stuffed with bones, odd shaped rocks, funny looking nests. There was this one time I had found this really large wasp house at a friend's farm and I decided to bring it back home with me to my studio. That wasp house I had to go through a baggage screening process and I still remember the look of face of, of people and the stares that I got because they looked at me in utter disbelief. The authorities at the airport stared at me wondering why would a girl want to drag something this useless and put it through a baggage screening process and take care of it with so much delicacy. But little did they know that the wasp house could be a possibility of art material or maybe an inspiration for my next culture. Who knows? Right? So I went along. I went along thinking that this is it. You know, I want to be a sculptor. I have clay with me. I want to fuse different materials. And I'm a self-taught sculptor. As I kept going on, I kept learning. I let my inner intuition just guide me and go ahead. And as I looked at everything around me, even mundane objects, I felt that what could I do with this? How could I bring it into my practice as an artist? How could I convert it into a work of art? And I started to realize that natural materials and mundane materials, my possibilities are actually limitless. For example, books. So, books are something as everyday as possible. We all love books. We all have access to it and we can relate to it. And one day I thought, what if we can never open a book again? And what if we lose all of this immense knowledge to time? So I started visiting all the Radhiwalas and I started to collect different kinds of books and shapes and sizes. I started to fuse the books with clay and I started to burn them. And please don't mistake me for me not liking studying or academics. I just wanted to make a crazy looking sculpture. And there it was, a book presented to an audience, which looks like it's frozen in time and we're losing it to time. And so on, it went from one sculpture to the next. After Diwali, which is a, the festival of lights, people burn firecrackers. I was going on a walk one day and I saw these burnt sparklers or firecrackers just held up in bunches and left by the roadside near a dump yard. When I looked at them, I thought, wow, that looks like a blooming bouquet of flowers. And that was my next artwork. I incorporated that burnt firecracker into my clay and I created this bouquet of flowers which bloomed, which looked like they were in bloom. So I want to share this um, 
interesting incident of how material and a work of art can have varied open ended as well as rigid interpretations i took porcelain which is white china clay i created a large scale sculpture with it 8000 small pieces of fragile bone like structures were created i preferred to display them on the floor so while this work was being displayed there were many people who came to view it the adults who came for this exhibit and encountered the works they felt a sense of unnerving they felt like these bones give them this alarming sense of death and finality whereas that same very work encountered and experienced by children they saw this work as light floating breathing entities that were kind of ready to levitate it looked like they were they were fragile pieces of paper to them and it was an interesting eye opener because materials can invoke different emotions art can invoke different thoughts and emotions with different kinds of people but very clearly i feel for me that children look at this world with so much wonder and openness when we grow up we look at objects around us and it's sort of day in and day out we feel like probably it lacks luster we are so caught up in being adults we are so uh we feel that okay we need to call a spade a spade we forget to dream we forget to wonder and we just look at objects for its face value or its its function it would be absolutely frivolous for me to uh tell you that let's pick up something that is abandoned and discard it let's reinterpret it let's reimagine it like ostracons so ostracons are these broken pottery pieces and these are very interesting pottery pieces which were found in egypt and greece ancient egypt and greece they were used for writing they were used for drawing they were used to cast a vote you could even scribble somebody's name and ostracize them so that's where the name comes from to ostracon ostracize some humans at some point in time decided that let me pick up something very generic and abandoned and let me fill it with a meaningful gesture inscribe it with something beautiful and from something so generic it becomes something so specific my journey so far started in my childhood with this box of curiosities it reminded me of the wanderer the child with no inhibitions and now when i look at it there is no box all my curiosities right now are in a sphere a crusty mushy deep centered sphere called the earth and all its natural materials are in my artist palette ready to spill over and flow creating new works and flying with my imagination